I'm going to start another geode. I'm going to begin by weighing the yarn for the outside so that I can uh, add to the pattern how much it takes. So the starting weight is 28.14 grams. And you see how this yarn is, uh, the ball of yarn is uh, it's kind of a mess. Here's the center uh, of the ball and the rest is kind of coming apart. Um, this yarn is, is doesn't really like to stay in a ball that's why I keep it inside of a drawstring bag to work from it so that it doesn't get tangled up. For this cast on I'm going to leave a long tail so that when I'm finished I can use that cast on yarn to sew through all the layers of the geode to make it sort of lumpy and rocky looking and to secure everything in place. So uh, a long tail is useful. I would say just go with 18 inches, your standard sewing thread length. I'm just going to guess. Start with a slip knot and then pick up another needle and wrap three times, which is going to give you six stitches. I'm going to zoom in and try to knit this. Here's how you knit the Turkish cast on. Now when I say cast on, I'm including this step in casting on. This is not the first row of knitting. This is what I'm calling the casting on. I'm not sure how other patterns do it. Do they just mean the wraps of the cast on? And now I'm losing my attention. Now drop this slip knot. Damn it. Hard to say. Knitting is forgiving enough that even if you knit an extra row at the very beginning, it, it probably won't matter. The Turkish cast on is not the easiest thing, but it does give a good result. Imagine sock knitters are really good at this. I've never knit a sock. Okay, there's the cast on. The back side of the Turkish cast on with the pearl bumps. Um, this is the tail. So the tail is on the opposite side from where you started. So if you're trying, if you lose track and you need to know where the beginning is, the beginning is the opposite side from the tail. The first row of knitting, I'm just going to knit these one more time just to get going. I'm going to knit two stitches onto the first needle. I'm going to pick up another needle and knit the next two stitches. And I'm going to pick up that needle again and knit the next two stitches. I have three needles with two stitches. And see how all of my needles, the short part where I finished knitting is all on the same side. This one I slid, but um, that's how I keep track of which end is which so that my work doesn't get twisted. So the next needle I want to knit, I have to slide it, slide the long side up to where I need to knit. So. I know that's the beginning. So now I'm at the beginning again and I want to do a make one right. To make one right I pick up this the the knit 
stitch below the stitch on the needle and I knit that stitch. So that's a make one right and then I knit the, the first stitch. Now I want another make one right. And another method instead of just knitting it straight off the work you could put it up onto your needle and then knit the make one right. That's called a lifted increase. And then knit the stitch. And I'm going to go to my next needle. Slide that long end up to the work. And I want to make one right. And then knit one. Needle is in my way. My camera stopped and my memory got full right in the middle of this set of stitches. Okay, I can tell where I left off because I have two stitches on the needle and one left. That means I need to do a make one right. And a knit one. And that's four stitches on that needle. And the next needle is this one. And can you see how it's, uh, which end of the needle do I knit from? This is the question. Well, I know that I knit from this one because, uh, because I keep it with the short end this side and the long end has to be pushed through to start knitting. I'm using Teflon coated aluminum needles because this is a cotton and polyester yarn and it, um, it's easier for me. Uh, but if, if you're a beginner knitter, you probably want to try a different kind of needle, something stickier so that it won't fall out of your work. Bamboo, plain old bamboo is probably good. So that's the make one right. Let's knit one. And that's your first increase row. All right, I turned off the camera and I held the work close to my face like I like to and finished knitting this, but then I, my mind wandered. Uh, how do I know if I've done all four stitches on each of the three needles or if I've missed one or if I've done one twice? Well, let's look at the underside. Uh, here's the tail of the yarn. Uh, down here by this needle. So that means this is the beginning. So I should have the working yarn needs to be between uh, these two needles, um, but it's it's not. It's down here. That means I accidentally knit it. I accidentally knit this one twice because it's uh, the working yarn is in the wrong place. So I'm going to work back and uh, fix this problem. All right, I'm going to knit backwards, just one stitch at a time. It's only four stitches. To knit backwards, all I'm going to do is put the tip of my needle uh, underneath the, the stitch with the loop through it and then just pull the loop out and now I'm back to the beginning. So I'm going to put a marker and the next increase, instead of doing a make one right on this side, I'm going to knit, this is the stitch I increased before, this is the new column from the make one right. So knit that one and then I knit the next stitch. And now to balance all this out, this is the same stitch I increased in before. I increased off to the right, but now I want to increase off of it to the left. So I'm going to go two stitches below what's on the needle now. So that's the, the same column as the first stitch was increased from. So I pull that stitch to the side and now I see how the um, the correct working leg of the stitch is the back loop, the back side of the, on the, the back of the needle. So I knit through that. So you want to knit through the leg of the stitch that's to the right 
and in this case the way I picked it up with my knitting needle it's the the back loop so that's a make one left and I'll do another one so knit the next two and then do another make one left so that's see how this uh, this is the original stitch and then this is the one I want to pick up so just ignore the new loop and look at the look at the stitch that you worked on the last row and pick the loop up underneath that to do a make one left so you're going to make one left after you're knitting an even number of stitches then on the next row you make one right and it'll be an odd number you'll knit you make one right and then knit three and then make one right and you keep doing that all the way through the pattern till your geode is as big as you want it to be in trouble with that one okay that's my stitch there's my make one left now this technique um, to make a, a thing like this it it makes a sort of um, you, you can't really see the increases especially not after you've sewn it and made it all lumpy um, but it just sort of it's nice and kind of random and evenly um, knit as contrast to this little octopus um, where I did all make one right so the little octopus's head has these little swirly shapes to the to the increases So this is already six stitches bigger than this ever was. And now I'm going to make it another six stitches bigger. So to go from 54 to 60, I'm going to do make one right. Knit half of these stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's halfway. So then I do another make one right. So now that's 20 stitches. Do that on each needle, then it's almost time to bind off. All right, that's uh, another row knit at 60. So now I'm going to bind off. I'm just going to bind off with these same needles. This is going to be a tight um, bind off. It won't be stretchy, um, but that's uh, what I want at the edge of the geode. But I don't want it to look um, pulled in. I don't want it to look like, you know, um, cinched up edge so I'm going to do the regular Passover bind off because I want that nice looking chain edge Let's see if I can do it without going off camera <laughs> no knitting is a lot of muscle memory and once you've developed muscle memory that involves pulling your arms closer to you every time you make a stitch it becomes really hard to hold your arms out the whole time you're trying to knit anyway that's the Passover bind off and it makes this nice little chain edge do that all the way around all right, I'm at the last two stitches on my bind off. Pass the stitch over. And now I have um, the last loop. And what I want to do is I want a very long tail because I have to use this to sew up. So I'm going to cut a long tail. And I'm going to pull it all the way through the last loop. And I'm going to thread it on a needle.
and I'm going to, I want to join my bind off. I want this little chain to go all the way around neatly. And I didn't do it right because I went into the stitch before the one that was passed over. So that didn't look right. So I'm going to undo that. This is just trial and error is my point. So thread it on the needle again. And this time I'm going to try going in um, underneath the legs of the, um, the, the first really secured stitch. Not the one that not, not the first stitch, but the second stitch. So go under the legs of the second stitch in the chain and then go back through the one that the working yarn came out of. And now that looks nice. But because that's like any knitting, this wants to curl up and it doesn't look as um, cup shaped as you think it should to be a a geode, but um, that's just because it hasn't been sewn up yet. The next part of the geode is uh, two sort of inner layers of the edge. Um, I'm using these two shades of gray yarn because that's what I had. Um, it's probably about the same thickness as the last yarn I used, only it's uh, a lot fluffier. So I'm just going to do um, a long tail cast on onto this size 8 needle and I'm going to do 6 stitches less than I had when I finished the outside part. So that finished with 60 stitches so I'm going to cast on 58 in this color and then I'm going to repeat this whole process again with the lighter color and do six less than that. So 60 on the outside, 54 on this one, and 48 in the light color, if I did that right. I have a spreadsheet. All right, here's my 54 stitches cast on. I like to count 20 and then place a marker. Um, I just stick a needle in at 20 and then count another 20 and then count the rest and that way I can recount these 20s until I get 20 three out of five times. I'm very bad at counting uh, but I, I can always get it right if I just keep checking. So I make sure I have the right number of stitches and then I want to move these from this big needle onto uh, the same size needle I was working with before. So I go from a size 8 needle down to a size 4. And uh, I want to um, take these off in multiples of 6. So I had 54. So that's going to be uh, 8 stitches per needle or something like that. 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18. I know that uh, this will be three sets of 18 because I know that 60 is three twenties and I've increased by two stitches. This is the alternate arithmetic of people who have dyscalculia. Alright, so I'm done with this needle. Put that away. And I can remember this part, so I've done this part. Now I just want to knit two rows and bind off. So I have the um, working yarn over here, so I need to flip this over. Make sure I have the, this is the tail. And this is the working yarn. Make sure I grab the right one. I don't like to start knitting with the tail. I just feel like an idiot when I realize that's what I've done. All right, now is the time to make sure these are not twisted. So I want the, um, the, the bump part to be below the needle. So 
I'll hold the tail to keep that turned the right way. Now I just take another needle and I'll hold this tail to keep that needle um, nearby. And knit that first stitch. And um, by holding onto the tail and um, pulling that first stitch good and tight, um, it's gonna it's gonna look crappy, but it doesn't matter. It's gonna be hidden inside the geode. But this just sort of keeps everything from flopping around too much. So then just knit around and do um, two rows like this. All right, I've come back around to the tail for the second time. So there's two strands of yarn there. That means I've done this twice. And I can go ahead and bind off. And I'm going to do the same thing I did for the top with uh, just a simple pass over bind off. Top, I mean outside. Here at the last stitch in the bind off, I'm going to do the same thing I did uh, for the outside layer. I'm not going to, um, I'm going to hold that last loop on the needle, cut a tail. It doesn't need to be long, this one. Pull that through. Thread it on a needle. Tidy this up because this uh, this cast off edge is going to be the, the most visible part of this little thing I just made. So go under the legs of the second stitch in the bind off. Pull that through and back through where this came through. It's going to go through both of the last two stitches. So that makes a nice pretty ring. Of course it wants to roll up, that's how knitting does. But that uh, little ring of chain stitch of the cast off is the part that's going to show. I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to work it down through the work to the cast on tail and I'm just going to tie these together in a knot that's going to be inside of a bean bag. If you're using real wool you could just work your tails in and they'd stay there but this is not wool this is acrylic so it doesn't have any kind of um, teeth that would grab and make it stay and I don't want it to come apart this should be able to be played with so that's the that's that ready to go. Just work it with my fingers to get it even. Now notice because of this, I cast on with a size 8 needle and I bound off with a 4 needle, the bind off is going to be a lot tighter and less stretchy than the other side. So if you forget which, uh, which side is which, you want to use the, um, the tight side for your sewing, not this nice loose side. The nice loose side should be down inside the work so that the whole um, body of the geode is um, equally squishy and stretchy. Now with the light gray yarn, I'm going to repeat the process to make another layer of edge and just long tail cast on nice and fast on a size 8 needle and then move it over to your four needles and join in the round, knit two rounds and bind off. Alright, I have all of my little edge pieces made, so I'm going to get out a, a needle and thread the tail from this uh, long tail I left on the main yarn. Thread that. I'm going to put the knit side of the bands against the purl side of the outside of the geode. So I'm going to start by putting my needle under the first stitch that's right above the knot. The first stitch of the dark color and then I'm going to do the same on the light color. Just put it right underneath both legs of the cast off stitch. Pull that through. I may have left too long of a tail but boy I'd rather have too much yarn than not enough.
at the beginning this is a little bit tricky because it wants to um, you know it's kind of curls all over the place but as you go along it will become a little bit easier and then when you finish it's going to stand up by itself quite nicely so go to the next stitch in line and go under both legs of the stitch on that one and then the one behind it you want to be sure it's not the same stitch it's the next one go under both legs of that then at the front you want to go under both legs of that stitch all right now what happens at eight stitches remember that this dark gray has six stitches less than the shiny gray and the light gray has six stitches less than that so 12 stitches less than the outside so when I get to 10 stitches on the outside I should be at nine stitches on this one and eight stitches on this one so what I'm going to do is uh, this is the ninth stitch in the front and I'm going to go through the ninth stitch on the middle but I'm going to go into the eighth stitch on the back then I'll go through the ninth stitch on the back and the tenth stitch on the front and the tenth stitch on the very front I want to go through the 11th stitch I'm going to go through the 10th stitch again on the middle and through that same stitch again on the back and so now I have taken I've gone um, I've, I've taken up two on the back and one in the middle for each one on the front and then I'll repeat that the next 10 stitches along so that it comes out even. All right, I'm coming up on an increase column, so I'm going to do that uh, doubling up thing again. So I'm going to go through the front stitch, the corresponding middle stitch, and then I'm going to go back through the same stitch on the inside that I went through before. Then come back through the next stitch. through the next middle stitch, the next front stitch, that's the one in the in the increase column, then when I go back through I'll go through this stitch again and through this stitch again. <laughs> 